Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to the beginning of Big Idea 4, which is reactions, stoichiometry, and more and more and more and more and more. Today, we're doing the very intro to reactions. So. Uh, first of all, we have reactions which physical changes are not chemical reactions. So the most common that you'll hear in AP chemistry are phase changes. So a solid to a liquid, you should be able to draw these pictures. So you get a solid, it turns into a liquid. Um, and that's called melting, freezing, boiling. These words aren't all that crazy. Uh, my liquid turning into a solid. Um, and now in this, we do have a liquid turning into a gas, but note the number of particles does not change. We can also have a gas turning into a liquid, right? It's condensation. We can also have a gas to a solid whoop, right there and skipping it. That's deposition, also called sublimation. And then solid to a gas sublimation. Uh, examples of solid to gas, um, the most common example of that is CO2. And it goes directly from a solid to a gas that's dry ice. Forming a solution is also a physical change, um, and they'll refer to that once in a while. Chemical changes. You know the signs of a chemical change. A precipitate forms, which is a solid from two solutions. Um, a color change, so examples where you'll see something like that would be rust, rotting apples. Um, you'd see color change that happens from that. Light and sound explosions. Um, and then just regular light bulbs. Um, a gas forms, um, which in chemistry is often bubbles, or what we saw in our lab. And a new substance forms is always true. These are just all examples of a new substance forming too, except for the energy ones. Common patterns of chemical reactions. There's synthesis. Now, um, names need not be memorized. We will never even use them. But you should be able to recognize the pattern. So you don't need to know these names. You did in ChemExcel. You don't anymore, okay? Um, synthesis is two things smash into one. Um, I'm just going to balance this because it's fun that way. Um, I want to remind you the products. Let me erase that word. Products balance the charges. Have balanced charges. So Na is plus one, Cl is minus one. That's why it's NaCl. Um, decomposition, by the way, the products will always have balanced charges, whatever we're looking at here. Okay. So decomposition. Um, this decomposition gives you a lot of help. They're typically given to you, um, and you don't need to be able to predict them very well. Single replacement. Um, one part can react with the other. So A and C can replace each other, or B and C can replace each other, okay? Well, I think I underlined that in the wrong spot, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I can fix my underlining. But basically, C is going to replace one of them. So C is more attractive than B, and it kicks it out. Or C is more attractive than A, and it kicks it out. Um, you can identify which one. Positive replaces positive. And a negative replaces a negative. Um, double replacement or metathesis, sometimes called that. Um, acid base reaction, sometimes called that. Precipitation reaction, sometimes called that. And notice A and C change places, and that's basically it. That is it in a nutshell. Okay. Um, precipitation, we do have to have, we do have to identify our precipitates. You can work on that a little bit this time. Combustion reactions, um, you're going to add oxygen to each part. So if I have C and H, I'm going to get CO and HO. If I have M, I'm going to get MO. If I have C and H, I'm going to get CO and HO. I think you know carbon dioxide is the most common carbon one, and water is the most common hydrogen one. Um, redox reactions are talked about way more and were never mentioned in ChemExcel. Um, redox reactions have charges, oxidation numbers, 
that change. Okay, so the charges change. And they call them oxidation numbers. We did a little bit with that. We'll do a little more on this chapter. Net ionic equations. Ionic compounds are solutions. And solutions are written as ions. All other substances are written as compounds. Net ionic equations tend to deal with precipitates. Okay? So we are used to this. This big beastie. I've got an aqueous. I've got an aqueous. I've got an aqueous. I've got a solid. Lead chloride, by the way, would be our solid um, because group one ions are soluble, right? Sodium is group one. Soluble means aqueous. Soluble equals aqueous. Now, to make it a little simpler, or less simple, to be honest with you, I have lead nitrate. Notice how it's split up. Sodium chloride. Notice how we split it up. Sodium nitrate. Notice how I split it up because it's aqueous. But I wrote this together because um, it's a precipitate. Remember how uh, soluble compounds are ions? Precipitates are one thing. Do you see how I have nitrate on the left and I have nitrate on the right? Goodbye. Sodium on the left, sodium on the right. Bye bye So all I have left, lead chloride, lead chloride, lead chloride, lead chloride, lead two chloride. Okay? So... Um, using our solubility rules, I want to teach you a handy-dandy little rule. Group 1 ions, NH4s, and nitrates are soluble. What that means is I don't believe in them. I'm going to cancel them right away. So I'm going to be quick on the periodic table. I guess I'll draw myself a quick little periodic table for my group 1s. K is a group 1 ion. Na is a group 1 ion. You see I have OH negative and SO4 negative 2 from the ions I memorized. This is no reaction. So again, one, cancel, always soluble. Step two, check. That's a check mark. Leftovers. I know you think that's a uh, frequency sign, but it's not. Magnesium, okay, nitrate is always soluble. Ammonium is always soluble. So here's my possible choice. Mg plus 2 plus SO4 minus 2 makes MgSO4. Let's check our solubility rules. Okay, not group 1, so I'm looking for uh, a sulfate rule. Most sulfates are soluble. Exceptions are mercury, barium, lead, so this is soluble. Soluble means aqueous. Oops, MgSO4. So if this is aqueous, that means I shouldn't write it like that. I should write it as Mg plus 2 plus SO4 minus 2. So this is no reaction. Or actually, I should say no precipitate, but either one's okay. K3PO4, K is group 1. Uh, that's all I can do. So I have phosphate plus copper. This comes from plus 2 plus Cl negative. So phosphate is going to react with copper or nothing. Copper is plus 2, plus 2. Phosphate is minus 3. There's my 3. I'm getting rid of chloride. Let's check to see if this is a precipitate or not. Copper is not group 1 because it's in the middle right around here. Remember the D block is in the middle. Oh. Right. Copper is somewhere around here. Um, so I'm going to look for a phosphate rule. Most sulfides, carbonates, chromates, and phosphates are only slightly soluble and soluble for us. So insoluble means a precipitate. There's my precipitate. Clean this up a touch by erasing my slot. All I care about is the ions that I've made. That's it. Hey, isn't that a good one? It's the best one ever. I will talk to you later, my friends. Toodles.